हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई सी अकेडमी इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ जेड ट्रांसफॉर्म द जेड ट्रांसफॉर्म प्रॉपर्टीज कैन बी यूज्ड इन द स्टडी ऑफ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल्स एज वेल एज सिस्टम्स सो टू स्टडी द डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल्स एंड सिस्टम्स वी कैन यूज दिस प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ जेड ट्रांसफॉर्म there are 10 different properties of z transform let us understand one by one first let us understand linearity property of z transform the linearity property states that if for x of n if we perform z transform at that case we will get x of z with roc r1 and y of n if we perform z transform we'll get y of z with roc r2 then for a x of n plus b y of n if we perform z transform then we should get a x of z plus b y of z with roc r1 belongs to r2 now let us prove this we know that z transform of x of n we can write it as x of z this can be written as summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n z to the power of minus n therefore in place of x of n let us write a x of n plus b y of n so we can write z transform of a x of n plus b y of n will be equal to summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity a x of n plus b y of n into z to the power of minus n so we can write this equation as summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity a x of n z to the power of minus n plus summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity b y of n z to the power of minus n so here a and b are the scaling factor so we can take these two outside the summation so we'll write a into summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n z to the power of minus n plus b into summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity y of n z to the power of minus n so we can write this as a so this term we can write it as x of z plus b into so this term we can write it as y of z so z transform of a x of n plus b y of n we got it as a x of z plus b y of z second property is time shift property it states that if we take x of n and if we perform z transform we will get x of z with roc equal to r then x of n minus n not if we perform z transform then we will get z to the power of minus n not x of z now let us prove this proof z transform of x of n is nothing but x of z 
we can write this as summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n z to the power of minus n then z transform of x of n minus n naught will be equal to summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n minus n naught z to the power of minus n let us put n minus n naught is equal to l therefore we can write n is equal to l plus n naught so we can write the above equation as summation of l is equal to minus infinity to infinity so since we are replacing n with l so we'll write in place of n we'll write the l here so it will be l is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of l z to the power of minus l plus n naught so we can write this equation as summation of l is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of l so we can split this z term we can write this as z to the power of minus l into z to the power of minus n naught now we can take this z to the power of minus n naught outside the summation and we can write this as z to the power of minus n naught into summation of l is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of l z to the power of minus l so we can write this as z to the power of minus n naught into so this term we can write it as x of z so z transform of x of n minus n naught we got it as z to the power of minus n naught into x of z similarly if we perform z transform of x of n plus n naught we will get z to the power of n naught into x of z the third property is scaling in z domain it states that if for x of n if we perform z transform we'll get x of z with roc is equal to r then alpha to the power of n x of n if we perform z transform on this we'll get x of z divided by alpha with roc equal to magnitude of alpha into r here alpha is a complex number proof if it performs z transform on x of n we'll get x of z this can be written as summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n z to the power of minus n then if we perform z transform on alpha to the power of n x of n we'll get summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity alpha to the power of n x of n z to the power of minus n now we can write this as summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n alpha to the power of n z to the power of minus n so we can write this as summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n into alpha inverse into z whole to the power of minus n so here in place of z we are having alpha inverse z that's why we can write the above equation as x of alpha inverse z so this we can write it as x of z divided by alpha so z transform of alpha to the power of n x of n is nothing but x of z divided by alpha 
since alpha is a complex number if alpha is equal to exponential to the power of j omega naught n then exponential to the power of j omega naught n x of n if we perform z transform on this we will get x of exponential to the power of minus j omega naught n into z fourth property is a time reversal property it states that if for x of n if we perform z transform we will get x of z with roc equal to capital r then x of minus n if we perform z transform on this we will get x of 1 by z with roc equal to 1 by r proof z transform of x of n we can write it as capital x of z which is nothing but summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n z to the power of minus n then z transform of x of minus n we can write it as summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of minus n z to the power of minus n let us put l is equal to minus n so we can write the above equation as summation of l is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of l z to the power of l since minus n is equal to l so we can write this expression as summation of l is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of l z inverse whole to the power of minus l here if you observe in place of z we are having z inverse that's why we can write the above equation as x of z inverse so which is nothing but x of 1 by z so z transform of x of minus n we can write it as capital x of 1 by z fifth property is time expansion property it states that if for x of n if we perform z transform we will get x of z with roc equal to r then xk of n if we perform z transform on this we will get x of z to the power of k with roc equal to r to the power of 1 by k where xk of n is equal to x of n by k let us perform the proof if z transform of x of n we can write it as x of k that is nothing but summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n z to the power of minus n then z transform of x k of n we can write it as summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x k of n z to the power of minus n since x k of n is equal to x of n by k we can write the above equation as summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n by k into z to the power of minus n if we put n by k is equal to p then n can be written as p into k then above equation we can write it as summation of p is equal to minus infinity to infinity since we are replacing n with p 
x of p into z to the power of minus p k. You can write this equation as summation of p is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of p into z to the power of k whole to the power of minus p. Here in place of z we are having z to the power of k that's why we can write the above expression as x of z to the power of k. So we can say z transform of x k of n can be written as x of z to the power of k. Sixth property is conjugation property. It states that if x of n, if we perform z transform on this, we will get x of z with ROC equal to R. Then x star of n, if we perform z transform on this, we should get x star of z star with ROC equal to R. Let us prove this. If x of n is real, then we can write x of z is equal to x star of z star. So if x of n is real, then we can write x of z is equal to x star of z star. If x of z is having a pole or 0 at z is equal to z naught and also it must have a pole or 0 at z is equal to z naught star.